Layers are the magic that make rooms work in GameMaker. I'm going to show you how to create and add new layers to your rooms. Then we're going to do a deeper dive into the properties of each of those layers and what assets they can hold. And finally, we'll talk about the most common errors that you'll run into when you start using multiple layers in your games. Let's get started. So every room that you create or open is going to have two layers by default, the background and the instances layer. The background layer holds a solid color or a sprite, and the instances layer holds your objects. Now, to make more of these layers, these buttons right down here are what you're looking for. The bottom left one is a new background layer. You can also press Control B to create that. And it makes a new layer on top of the one that we had selected. So because I had instances highlighted, when I clicked new background layer, it put it on top of that. Next, we have new instances layer. After that comes tile layers. Then we have path layers and asset layers. And finally, filter and effects layers. To help organize all that, the next button here is creating a new folder. So we can click on that and then we can drag these layers into this folder and minimize it. And that will allow us to then get organized and stay structured. You can right click on any of these and rename. And then you can actually put folders inside of folders as well. If you have a folder selected and you click on add folder or create a new layer, it gets put inside of that folder. So you can have nested folders just like in the asset browser. The last button over here is the delete selected layers. So if we wanted to delete everything we have here, we can click on that each time, or we can actually highlight multiple ones, press the delete key, and it does the same thing. So stick around, we're gonna do a deeper dive into each of the layers we just talked about. So we're back in a room with just two layers. Let's go ahead and start with the background layer. This is what you can see in the background of your game. You can come down here to color and you can choose any color you want, which is fine, but it's kind of boring. It gets a lot more interesting when we use a sprite. This button right here lets us choose a sprite for the background. I'm gonna choose a background put out by Game Maker in one of their bundles, and this is a volcano. This is really cool, and this is when you can start using the rest of the options down here in the Properties tab. So, we can horizontally and vertically tile this sprite, and we can stretch it. Now, stretching actually makes it larger, but it can also make it smaller to fit properly. As you can see right here, this full volcano sprite doesn't actually fit in our room. So if I click stretch, it now fits properly. So it can go both ways. I'm gonna uncheck that right now. Then we can horizontally tile this. Now you can't see this until you come down to the speed. And if I set this to a speed of one and I click play, it's going to then move this background at a speed of one pixel per frame to the right. If I take off horizontal tile, you'll immediately see that the background itself is moving out of the way and only with horizontal tile does it look continuous as one big background. And the same thing is true for vertically tiling. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the speed to zero here. Now, you can set an offset here. So if I turn off horizontal tile and I put an offset of 500, it just moves the background because you can have lots of backgrounds in here, you might wanna set an offset for each individual one. So I'll set that back to zero. If it's an animated sprite, you can have it play and you can set the animation speed right here and change the time units. And you can also set a custom depth. And underneath that is the effect type. You can apply an effect to every individual layer in your game. So if we wanted to give this one something like a heat haze, this whole thing now looks really cool, like it's alive. And this can be applied to every single layer you put in your game. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off right now so it's not too distracting. Next up is the instances layer. Here is where your objects live. So I'm gonna drag OBJ player inside and now we have our OBJ player in our instances layer. And she's animating because this play button was clicked and now she's still playing. So. Down in the properties, we can see every instance in it, and we can also set a custom depth and apply an effect here. So if I apply an effect 
on this one, like changing the color tint, it only affects the instances layer. It doesn't affect anything else. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and then come the tile layers. So if we add a tile layer, we need to use a tile set to be able to do anything with it. And over here on the right next to assets, a new tab has appeared, the room editor. And with it, we can select a tile set. I've got another one here from Game Maker, another volcano themed one. I can now choose one of these and place it inside. You can change the size of that to make them larger. You also have custom brushes and libraries. These ones already have auto tiling enabled. So if I come in here, I can now click here and it will automatically set these to be exactly what they should be based on their position in the room. Pretty cool. Then we have the path layer. So the path layer is for visualizing the paths that you have in your game. So you have to have one. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna choose one that I've already got. And you can see here that this path comes into the room and being able to see the path in the room is actually really helpful because now I can come in here and I can actually move these around and put them right where they should be. Whereas before I didn't quite know the size of the level, the things that were in it. So putting an overlay in here can be really, really great. And down here in the properties, you have all the options you do in the path editor, such as making it straight or curvy, making it closed, setting the precision and setting a custom depth. The effect here doesn't do anything besides changing it visually in the room editor. It won't change anything of how the path actually runs in your game. Then we have the asset layer. The asset layer is for sprites and sequences. So we could come over to our assets and I could grab SPR, the player that I've got here, and I could put her in. And you can see that she's animated and working just as you would expect with an animated sprite, which is pretty cool. The real power comes in when you use a sequence because sequences can actually create instances, play sound effects, and do so much awesome stuff. And they live in the asset layer. Lastly, we have the filter and effect layer. This is a layer wide effect or filter. So if we were to come up here to the effect type and we were to choose color tint and we come over here to green, we can now see that every single layer is being affected by this. And if we grab the effect layer and we move it down, we can isolate certain layers to not be affected. This is really great when you wanna have multiple effects in your room on specific layers. You can put them here and you can have them affect just one layer or multiple layers at a time with that. And that's our deep dive for layers. Up next, we're gonna take a look at the most common mistakes that you'll run into when you're using lots of layers like this. Now, the most common mistake I see is getting your depth out of order. So if we were to drag this background layer to the top, it would make everything else vanish. That means the background layer is now in front of everything else. They're still there. You can see that this asset layer still has this sprite and this instance layer still has the object, but because this is on top, this is what we see. We can drag it back down and put it where it's supposed to be. Now you can also do custom depths and that can cause some confusion. So if you're using custom depths, just make sure that you know what the properties should be and that you still have them lined up accordingly for where they're supposed to be at. The next common mistake I see is using this lock icon and this eyeball when you don't mean to. So you can lock a layer down, which means you cannot edit its properties anymore. So if you come into this background layer and I try to click on anything, you can't. It kind of feels like a bug, but it isn't. We've got this locked down. And you can actually lock down every single layer in your game with this top lock icon. And then we have this eye icon, which can make your layers disappear, both in the room editor and in the game. The one thing to note here is if you make an instance layer disappear, the instances are still being spawned and their code will run. You can make every layer disappear by clicking up here and you can bring them back just the same way. And once you start adding in a bunch of layers and you wanna be able to click on one of them, it can actually be really hard to do. So if I wanted to click on this sprite or this path, I can't click on it unless I click on that layer first 
and then I can select its properties. To fix that, you can actually come up here and click on this icon, and then you can select from any layer. You can also hold down P at any time to enable the same functionality. So then you can click on any asset from any layer, which is pretty handy. And lastly, what I see is people trying to add assets in when they don't have their layer selected. If you try and do that, like I've got the path layer selected right now and I'm trying to add my OBJ player, it asks me if I wanna make a new layer. You can make a new one and sometimes that's fine, but also sometimes it's not. Because if you think you're dragging in your object when it's actually a sprite and you click create, and now you've got a sprite in your room where you think it's an object, then it's not actually going to do anything because sprites can't run any code. And that's all the mistakes that I can think of. Did I miss anything? Have you run into anything that you really feel that others need to know about? Leave a comment below. I would love this to be a fantastic resource for all of the mistakes and errors that people can have when using layers in their rooms. If you enjoyed this, leave a like. If you want to see more content from me, check out the links in the description down below. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.